Okay, we're here with uh, a very important person in uh, black metal. Can you please introduce yourself? This is Eric from Hatay. Okay, Eric, thank you so much for having us. Um, late April, you released the seventh Watain full-length album called The Agony and Ecstasy of Watain. Can you tell us a bit more about the writing and recording of the new album? Um, yes, I can. Uh, it's such a big uh, thing to record an album uh, in the life of a musician. At, le at least to me. I mean, I've been on a, I've been on a stage uh, in my life, maybe uh, I don't know a thousand times by now, but I've been recording an album seven times, you know? So it's not something that I'm used to and it's something that really, uh, that I really enjoy the entire process of, uh, the entire, in this case, three years that it, that it took to, to kind of um, put all the material together and recording it. Uh, recording it was quite fast. Uh, we, uh, when we entered the studio, we had, uh, um ninety percent of the material demoed with vocals mm -hmm. uh, and lyrics were pretty much done uh, so the major part of that process to me is of course like uh, the, the the entire creative process pretty much mm -hmm. which 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 will always like be a bit of a mystery to me mm -hmm. i think it's not a normal thing at all to yeah. occupy oneself with touring. Uh, being on a stage, things like that, they are pretty concrete and w like defined uh, ways of spending your time. Uh, creativity, on the other hand, is something else. It's, yeah. it's much closer to the idea yeah. that I have of magic. Um, you now have your own studio, if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in some kind of a chapel or a uh, church? Or yeah, well, I, I, I can see why, why, uh, why you think that. It's almost uh, like that because the guy who owns this studio, it's not our, it's not Vatain's studio, it's our producer's studio, but it's the same producer that we have worked with for all of our albums and uh, who has also been our uh, front of house sound technician live mm -hmm. for pretty much as long as we've been touring. Mm -hmm. So it's his studio, it's the first time we record there. It's actually the first time that any band records in that studio um, with like the, a full setup. So that was quite special. It's, it's, uh, it's in a chapel on the countryside, uh, yeah. quite close to where, where, where we all live also. So it's, it's a yeah, spectacular uh, environment actually to record is, is it. Is it um, some kind of an environment that that can give you extra inspiration when it need to or yes i think so i i, I never understood how uh, bands that perform like very uh, well to to to, uh, to use an easy word extreme music uh, emotionally extreme music uh, i i never understood how they could record in rooms that look like this room that we're sitting in now you know mm -hmm. it's it's uh, uh, this kind of like kind of sterile uh, hospital light kind of environment i i could i could i couldn't do that or or like why would i want to do that I, uh, so i uh, every time we went into a, a studio uh, we have always brought like most of the things that we have on stage mm -hmm. and so on we have always uh, like uh, brought a lot of black textile to cover all the walls and uh, like we're going to be there we're going to do something very important it's not like I said in, in the start, it's not that often you record an album, so you want to no. make it special, you know. I when I when I listen to these songs now, I can I can really feel that room and and the energy in that room, you know. I think that's super important. I can I can see how what you mean. Um, you mentioned that you worked on the album for three years since starting to create it and 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 finishing it. What was the impact of the COVID ca pandemic? Um. I don't know. I mean, not that much. I would say we 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 live uh, we we all live in a in a small village uh, outside of pretty far away from the city, and uh, we uh, we are surrounded by woods. <laughs> yeah. But didn't it mean that you the the, the fact that you realized that you were not going to be able to to play live did that some kind uh, th that buy you some more time in a way mm, uh, maybe a little bit but but not in a major way okay. uh, i mean it didn't affect how the album turned out i would say it maybe it gave us a little bit more peace of mind to to know that 
we weren't maybe in the same rush as as we often tend to be when when we know that we have a tour coming up and so on. So maybe uh, it it was like a, a smoother um, way of 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 being in that situation. You know, having a bit more time. But I wouldn't say that it affected really the our th creative thoughts or yeah. anything like okay. that you know uh, did the fact that you changed labels from uh, century media to uh, nuclear blast have an impact on the records no not really okay um for the song we remain uh, you work together with farida lemucci right uh, from the devil's blood right. uh, molasses and uh, gottfried aman can you tell us a bit more about how that worked out uh they are both very close friends of the band and uh, not only you know in a on a personal level but also artistically they are very close to us uh, much of their past work has you know inspired us y greatly and we have been touring a lot together we've been traveling the world together a lot and we've been talking we we have actually have been playing music together as well but but uh, but uh, not in like you know official way so it was beautiful to to be able to uh, finally do something uh, that will be remembered in history, you know, mm -hmm. together. Uh, what are, in your opinion, the main differences between the latest album and the previous Watain albums? The main difference? Yeah. Um, Would you agree that it's perhaps uh, the most versatile Watain album? Um I'm not sure uh but but uh but it's certainly uh, uh the, 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 uh, I think we are at we we were at a place with this album where we were fi wh where we have been wanting to be I think since we started the band you know mm -hmm. and I'm talking uh a lot here about just musical ability, mm -hmm. being able to write certain kind of songs, being able to perform them the way they should be performed uh, in a group. And that for sure left a huge impact on the album. I think we have, we, we could, how to say it, it's a strange word to use, but uh, like I said, my brain is a bit malfunctioning, but we, we, we could play around a lot more, yeah. uh, you know. We we could we could uh, we could be much more loose in the process because everyone was really sure of where they w where we were explore at. Explore more in a way. Yeah, explore yeah. more and just you know be a bit more like loose. We d you d we didn't have to we didn't have to be so uptight about anything. Yeah. Everyone knew why they were there, what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We had a common f uh, focus, a common intention, which is yeah. you know which we always had. To a great extent, I, I would say we always had that, but but that's a, it's a feeling that I think, the longer you have a band, uh, that feeling should also increase. Mm -hmm. It should not, you know, become less and less. It should become increasingly like that. And and in that in our case, that's mm -hmm. that's how it is. I would say so. That's great. Uh, the album title, "The Agony <coughs> and Ecstasy of Watain," does, in my opinion, give us more insight in the feeling or the the vibe, the context of the album. Uh, compared to, for example, previous titles like Trident Wolf Eclipse, mm. do you agree with that, or uh, you mean that that uh, that the album uh, fits the uh, that the title has somehow it more relation to the music, or perhaps not, but it 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 it, it gives perhaps m kind of um, more of a feeling already what to expect. Okay, good, that's great. Uh, I think. Uh, Putting it, I, I love uh, titles, like song titles and movie titles mm -hmm. and book titles. I'm a little bit obsessed by that. Uh, that's why every Vatain album has a kind of like, uh, almost like cinematic title, you know. I, I love these kind of epic uh, uh, titles. Uh, I have a very soft spot for that, I guess. And this time I think... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I love the title. I'm I'm very. I, I also think that it's very descriptive of of the, uh, of the. Uh, yeah, of the of the album's feeling and yeah. and, and, and and emotional spectrum. You know, it, it is a quite g dramatic and mm -hmm. and grandiose kind of theatrical for sure. form of music. You yeah. know, so. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you th you think that. I, I I really think so. So I'm. 
I'm happy that you agree that with that on as well. Um, apparently, he has stated in, in previous uh, interviews that uh, metal should be written by people who live metal lives. Right. Can you elaborate on, on that? Uh, yeah, I mean... Is it metal in general, or do you mean black metal in in, in black metal? In absolutely, yeah. uh, but 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 in the, uh, in in that context uh, that, that I was probably speaking of, that w w from where you were quoting me, I think that yeah, I, I don't see metal uh, uh, as a thing that can be performed by anyone else who is like deeply affiliated mm -hmm. with with, the, with this form of of not only music but subculture and lifestyle in general i think that uh, of course you can you know you of course you can rip off a maiden riff even if you are a skater boy but uh but it's just to me the the, the metal that's that always struck hardest uh, the metal that always like kind of shook my soul has always been written by liberated spirit by, by by kind of outlaw free thinking real rock and roll men and women you know and, and that's uh that's just how it is mm -hmm. you know that there's no way around that no. i just uh, i mean if i would uh i w uh, if i would uh, be a young uh, guy wanting to write a love song I would probably wait to write that love song until I had been in love, you know. Which makes sense. A and yeah. if I would write a song about death, I would probably wait until I had some kind of actual experience of it. And uh, it's th the same thing goes, but on a, in a larger context with metal music, I think it kind of demands a, a personal affiliation, a kind of a deep-rooted kind of a compatibility mm -hmm. compatibility between between the artist and and the music you know i i that's my no, that's I my it make, it makes profound sense. belief yeah. <laughs> uh, especially in black metal in the black metal scene uh people seem to enjoy uh, discussing if things are true cults underground mainstream uh mm. putting labels on everything and and mm. bands uh how do you feel about those things as a fan of um the the the, the genre but also as one of the 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 front man of one of the mm. biggest black metal bands i think it's a super important uh discussion to be had i i i definitely don't think that uh, that it should be uh, you know uh avoided uh i i think it's uh, it's very um important to talk about uh what is real and what is not and and what is uh uh, if if it's something that I cannot stand, it's uh, charlatans mm -hmm. who live off things that real artists have done. You know, people who have lived and died for uh, these kind of things, and then you have uh, people who are just mimicking them or, mm -hmm. or you know, like rip ripping them off, but while in fact they have nothing to do with these kind of things in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everyone is, is, uh, is welcome to buy a black metal album. Anyone is welcome to come to our concerts. It doesn't matter if you're whoever you are, you know, just, just come, make up your own mind. You take, you know, whatever experience that you'll get and carry it with you and do what you want with that in your own context. But if you want to perform this kind of music, if you're going to write about these kind of things, I think it's, uh, I think it's an insult to to uh, to people who have bled, who have fought, who have lived, and who have died for these kind of things to do it without believing in it and without doing it for real, you know, mm -hmm. from from the bottom of your heart. Mm -hmm. It this it, it it's music will always, to a certain extent, be entertainment. You know, it 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 you cannot get around that but but in this in the case of, of black metal it involves a lot more than that you know I, it also involves spiritual ideas it Im it involves uh, uh, choices in life that are that can be considered perhaps quite radical to a lot of people and they cannot be ignored they cannot be you know uh, you 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 can't you can't you can't look around them. Mm -hmm. They are there, and they have to be considered. Mm -hmm. And uh, if someone tries, <laughs> if if someone's trying too hard, or if someone is just you know an obvious charlatan, I think it's important to kind of talk about that. I, uh, you know, that's how I grew up, and that's how I still think. You know. 
uh, you mentioned already the importance of song titles, album titles, mm. book titles, movie titles. Right. Um, you did the artwork for the album. Where did you where did you get your main inspiration for uh, your songwriting and art? Does it include uh, literature, uh, photography, movies? Yeah, it does. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I live what you could call an artist life. My, uh, my partner, who I live with, is also an artist, and we, 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 <laughs> we consume art daily. You know, uh, she works with ceramics uh, and and picture art, so it's a t totally different kind of scene. But for me, it's it's all about you know creative impressions and what kind of shakes your soul and, and, and what, what, what reaches into your heart, you know? And uh, uh, that can be anything from a photograph to a movie to a good conversation to, a, you know, uh, interesting personality or, or, or a good book or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. for, for me, it's, it's more about the, the, the things that kind of shakes you up a little bit and, and that kind of, that, that has this nerve that, uh, that that's required to kind of to wake you up and and you know get you get you in that zone so to speak uh how do you decide on a set list for a, a headliner show of one hour like today yeah that's a good question uh i wish i knew how <laughs> it's kind of a chaotic process that we enjoy but we have by now over 70 songs to choose from and it's 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 kind of tricky but it's also a uh, it's a pretty cool uh, challenge, I would say, to uh, to, uh, r to yeah. T w we always tr think quite hard when we do when we do a set list, you know. Yeah. But but uh, but uh, it, uh, there's there's so many different factors and parameters that w that we go by, uh, and uh, I we, we we try to change it around quite a lot as because much as you we can. You, you played a couple of shows since the album release. Yeah, and if just I'm not a few. Mistaken, you you played four new songs. Yeah, four new songs. Uh, I think. Yeah, uh, exactly. Ecstasy's and Night Infinite, Leper's Grace, City Moose and The Howling. Yes, that's right. Those are the ones that we'll do tonight. And for the tour that we have now coming up, we're doing the first tour for the album in September. And that's that's where we're really going to start exploring the yeah. rest of the album. Kind yeah. of. Um, does the uh, th this, uh, this might be the silliest uh, question no of the interview, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, it's perhaps not true metal or whatever, but does the fact that the weather is so hot uh, today, does it have an impact on your show, for example, uh, on your performance, uh, fire shore, blood on stage, uh, stage gear? Exactly. <coughs> uh, I I think uh, any kind of extreme uh, condition is is pretty interesting to perform in. Uh, I have to say uh, that I that I really enjoy it. You know, uh, it's it's definitely not something that I complain about. Uh, do you just but but. It, it it will affect the performance absolutely. If you go on in 35 degrees heat and you turn that up with covering the entire stage in fire, we'll see what happens. You know, but we've done it before. We've yeah. we've, we've we've done it on both ends. So so we've been we've been we've done shows at three in the morning yeah. in extreme cold too. And it's I I think yeah for this kind of music and what we're doing on stage, I think any. Anything that is kind of uh, on the edge of of uh, of any limit, you know, is 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 kind of good and welcome. Yeah, I think. for sure. Um, is the approach or the feeling different when you perform at a mainstream metal festival like Alcatraz today compared to a true black metal festival like, for example, Tronefest? No, uh, I wouldn't say that. I uh, we always approach our stage. Uh, in the same manner, and uh, that manner is is a uh, um, is one of uh, ceremony, you could say. It 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 it's more of a uh, it, it it's more of making that stage your own and and doing what we're here to do mm -hmm. with that stage. You know, it, it doesn't really depend who's looking on. Uh, then, of course, the uh, the vibrations between an audience and that stage are, of course, different. You know, depending on who who is looking on and why they are there and so on. But but that's 
that's the beauty, I think, of also of, of being able to perform in different kind of contexts and not just doing it for the same audience all the time. I think I would get l maybe a little bit bored doing that. You yeah. know, I, I really enjoy playing in front of people who have never seen us before, for example. If I'm not mistaken, you went to your first metal gig in 1993, Metallica. I think yeah. I, I read it somewhere. Yeah. And uh, you started Watain in uh, 1998. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what happened in those five years from going to your fir first Metallica gig to <laughs> starting a, yeah, a well ma black metal band? I think the biggest thing that happened was was getting involved in in really getting involved in in metal in general you know like realizing that, that there was was more extreme stuff i'm lucky enough to be from sweden so there was so much going on around that time with mm -hmm. the entombed and dismember uh, all those bands there was also you know you read about bathory you read about you know bands this the norwegian Marduk, bands yeah. exactly and and uh, there was just uh, all of those bands were very active at that time not bathory but 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 the other bands that i mentioned so there was so much for a young uh, guy to just suck in you know and then and, and absorb and we started a fan scene quite early on i think the year before we started batain i played in a few different like try out bands you know with people of my age but not none of them were really as serious a, as i wanted it to be you know mm -hmm. so uh they were they were really <laughs> formative years you know went yeah. to went to see the first black metal show ever uh, i went to i mean for me yeah, the first death metal gigs, you know, buying demos, buying fanzines before the internet. Beautiful times, yeah. very formative. Uh, what then will exist 25 years next year? Uh, looking ba yeah. back at all those years, what are some of your personal highlights or w some or some of your worst moments that you had with the band or being in the music business? Um, well. There's plenty of both, uh, but looking back, I think it's uh, uh, spontaneously. I think I I focus more on 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 on, on the meaningful and the and the the important things. You know, whether or not they have been good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the greatest things we have done uh, was for sure to. Uh, tour together with Dissection well, when they were still around and being close to that band and uh, and uh, working with them closely for the f the their last mm -hmm. years. Um, playing together with Salim from The Devil's Blood, having him as our guitarist for a while before he passed away was one of the greatest things that I that I have to look back on, you know. Uh, we did a very... Uh, uh, very cool Bathory tribute show in 2010 that involved uh, some of uh, Quarthon's family, yeah. uh, which uh, which still to this day is like it's one of the first thing that comes to mind. You know when people ask us about. I I, I read things. the book Bloodfire Death about the Swedish metal scene, and I think. Uh, oh that yeah. That uh, wasn't it uh, like a festival? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was Sweden Rock Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the first time we played yeah. there. I think I I read about that uh, event. Yeah. Um, how do you look back at uh, on some of the controversies of the last couple of years? Uh, like, for example, the the cancellations in I think it was uh, Indonesia, Singapore. Oh, Singapore, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think they're necessary and uh, a very important part of what we do. And uh, if there wouldn't have been any controversies and if there wouldn't have been any problems. <laughs> And there's been a few. Uh, I think we would have been doing something wrong in the first place. Black metal is problematic uh, music. It's uh, it's the devil in music shape, and uh, the devil is not a easygoing character. It's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an archetype that poses a lot of very uh, soul rattling questions. You know, N not of the easy kind mm -hmm. always. Uh, sadly, you could not, not take part in the tour earlier this year in the States with uh, Mayhem and, right. uh, and Midnight. Uh, you had some visa problems. Did you get a, a decent explanation from the authorities later on or not? Uh, uh, no, it's a very much an ongoing process. But uh, to make a long story short, 
uh, the last time that a band got refused to enter the States as an entire band, not as a, like one yeah. private person, but uh, was in 1965 when the Kinks were okay. were banned from the U.S. because of their like corruption of youth. And the second band in history to to be denied entrance is Vatain. So, so, so it, um, but we don't know why. They haven't told us the reason. Mm -hmm. It's U.S. Yeah. authorities you can imagine yeah. you know uh they're not that interested in in collaborating they just stamped a red stamp in our passports and just one thing that is important to know here is that there's plenty of reasons to be denied a visa there's been artists who been denied visas because they were not original enough yeah they, you know they, they have all these stupid reasons to to deny a visa but in our case the entire band is denied and on very unclear grounds. We suspect that it has to do with probably that they Googled the band, did a bit of research, didn't like what they found mm -hmm. and just denied us. But that's of course not allowed. No. That's, the, you know, that's, that's not a thing that you can do with a legal because backup. Ma mainly is because, for example, a criminal record, I think it's yeah, a yeah, part that's of Satiricon uh, who's yeah, also exactly. uh, yeah, there's banned. There's, yeah. there's plenty of those yeah. examples, yeah. you know, but, yeah. in a, but in our case, we, we, we've got pretty much clean slate, so it's, yeah. so it's, uh, it's, not a, it's not about that. It's something else, yeah. and they don't want to tell us what it is, and we got lawyers working yeah. on it, and it's a, it's a huge thing for us, obviously. You know, it's yeah. how, how far touring market so to say is is, is yeah. the US so it's it's uh, otherwise it's you would have played next week on Cycle, Cycle Las Vegas yeah, exactly. with Merciful right. Fate and yeah, bands yeah. like that yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily s soon you will be able to do the Chariots of Fire tour right uh, great tour title thank uh, you uh, as co-headliner with Abbott uh, Tribulation and Bolser uh, you must be looking forward to that one I guess I am really starting to look forward to it <laughs> to be honest because it's drawing near and a lot of uh, the things that we're doing now daily has to do with that tour, and it's just looking better and better for every day. So it's we've been a bit nervous about everything about it, you know, because the mm -hmm. way things have been in the past years. But uh, now it's really lining up, and it's it's uh, we know when we will be, you know, at the tour bus, and whether we will be loading the gear, and where the merch is coming in, and it's like it's fucking it's set up and ready to go. So mm -hmm. it's it feels fucking great. I have a last question. Um, any further big plans for the next couple of months uh, besides do doing that tour? Uh, Perhaps we writing some new material on tour, or yeah, is what exactly. another band who can write we music on tour? I think we are always writing. Well, I, I am I am always writing, especially lyrics. Uh, but uh, our main focus is going to be on touring, and we have, in we have a, uh, we have one more tour this year in South America, uh, in November, uh, which is going to be pretty epic. I think we're starting in Guatemala and <laughs> going on, and, st and the last date is in three weeks later in, I don't know, some other wi so some weird place where we've never been. I can't remember exactly where. So so it's that's that's. That's uh, what we're focusing on right now. So we're building, since we're building our entire stage show by hand ourselves, uh, everything that you're going to see here tonight on stage is, is to the smallest detail laid by us. Uh, and since we cannot fly with that over to South America, we're building an entirely wow. new stage show for, for that. So it's we're that's dedication. We're staying busy. <laughs> that's dedication. Yeah, okay. But but we we wanna we wanna be able to look around us on s on stage and feel that we're in a strong and meaningful place in our lives. You know that that it, that it's not about show business or entertainment. It's also about something deep. It's about a life work. It's about uh, something that you do with people that you love and respect and ha share a vision with and uh, you know all these things that people want to say about their bands but not always can you know uh, so so we we like to to take it down to detail that's where the devil is okay perfect thank you so much for your time